everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and today we're going to take a look at setting up Log for Old Men 2. Now, this is a really, really quick setup. It's not going into any super big detail. We're only doing the bare minimum to get the logging software up to where you can enter uh, QSOs in that logging program. Now, there's lots of other things that we can do with this. It's a very feature-rich logging software package. Um, the next video that we do on it is going to be interfacing CAT controls with it. And then we'll take a look at interfacing automatic lookups and all sorts of other things. So there's going to be a series of videos on this particular program. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy it. And hey, if you like the stuff that we're doing, do me a favor. Click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell as well. And that way you'll get emails every time we come out with new videos. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up too. Any comments or questions, of course, down in the bottom. Anyway, with that, Let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, Stu AG6AG, and we're going to do a real, real fast, real fast Log for Old Men 2 install. So let's get started. We're going to open up our browser and hope it shows up. There it is. And we're going to search for LOG. 4 O M and the top right here is www.log4om.com and we're going to go to the log4om2 link right below it and there we go and this is uh the release page talks about what's new the latest versions what they fixed or changed any bug fixes that they did um, and always look for the latest release so you know what that number is. So when you click on download, like I just did, you'll be able to see the program that you want to download. Versions of this come out all the time. It's a, uh, how do I say this? It is a aggressively updated package. Logbook for Old Men, by the way, is one of my favorite logging programs because, well, it does everything that I want it to, interfaces with all the stuff that I run, and bonus, it's free, okay? There's also a portable version. Now, I've never ran this, but they say that you can use this portable version like on a USB key and just plug it into any old computer, Um I don't know. I think I'm going to run some tests on that. And, uh, and you know, I think with all the features of Logbook for Old Men, I'm going to need to create oh, a playlist and a few more videos to show all the things you can do with it. Anyway, let's get this fast install done. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and let it go ahead and download. I better accept cookies from it, too. And we're going to just let it download real quick so we can go ahead and get it installed. Um, some of the other features of Logbook for Old Men is auto lookups. It can go out to QRZ if you have an XML account. And even if you don't, you can get about 100 lookups a day out of it. Um, it will go out to QRZCQ. It'll go out to QSO Log, I think is the other one. Um, We'll take a really quick look at that in future videos. Uh, it will also update all the online logging uh, programs, such as QRZ has their log. Uh, logbook of the World. It uh, can automatically update Logbook of the World. Uh, so you don't have to do all that signatures and uploading and all that other fun stuff. It will take care of it all for you. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Um Gosh, there's a bunch of other things that it does, uh, but again, there's so many features, it's really hard to cover them all in a short video. And I wanted to make this really quick. So, it looks like this is almost downloaded. We'll wait for our antivirus software to figure out that it's okay. 
And you have to excuse the speed of this computer. I'm actually doing this on a VM uh, so we can roll back and use it for multiple shoots. Um, one of uh, the other advantages to running Windows 10 Pro, but that's a subject for another video. So the easiest way to do this is I just click on this and it's going to open up the uh, zip of the install program. Once I get that open, I can close my browser and get it out of the way. And I'm going to just, when this pops up, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to just drag it out here to my desktop. Uh, the only reason for that is I want to unzip it completely and get it onto the computer as an install so it runs just a little bit faster. Because like I said, I am running this uh, on a virtual machine right now. And uh, as soon as this is done, I'll go ahead and click that. Now I'm going to drag this over to the middle because I don't want to confuse myself with it. And this is the install. So I double click it. And it should ask me all sorts of questions about, do I really want to run this? Oh, yes, the great Windows Protect Your PC screen. It says, don't run. Microsoft Defender Smart Screen prevented an unrecognized app from starting. Now, the reason this app is unrecognized is it doesn't know who the publisher is because it's unsigned. Uh, I'm going to say run anyway. I got it from a known site that I know exists. I verified in the URL that it was what it was. If, if you have any concerns about running things like that, um, you know, don't run them. Um, I'm not endorsing running unsigned apps. I'm just saying that if I know the source and I feel comfortable with the source, I'm not afraid to run them uh, to each their own. Anyway. Uh, do I want to install this? Again, unknown publisher. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and install it. Now, I can select a language here. I'm going to stick with English. I'm going to accept the terms of uh, uh, installing this, the agreement. Uh, boy, it's a lot of stuff to read. Feel free to read it. I'm going to take the default install directory. I tend to do that. And I don't have OmniRig installed on my machine here. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. Uh, it'll do it automatically. Uh, it's bundled with the package. OmniRig is a cat control system that will interface with your radio. And it's kind of neat because uh, programs that support OmniRig, such as HDSDR uh, and... Um, WSJTX, which support OmniRig, are allowed to share that rig across multiple programs, which is very, very helpful. Um, there are some programs that aren't quite that elaborate, uh, but it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and select Next. I'll let it select, uh, create the default program group, and I want to create a desktop icon. So let's install. So there are a lot of different packages out there that you can actually install on your uh, system for logging. Uh, you've got um, Logger32, you've got um, oh, uh, N3, I can't remember its entire name. Um, these, uh, some are free, some are pay for play. Of course, there's HRD, right? Ham Radio Deluxe, which uh, a lot of people run and really love, has everything built into it. Um, again, Log for Old Men does everything that I want it to do. It may not do everything that you want it to do. And again, I can't, I can't argue a price of free. All right, so let's go ahead and hit next. And uh, I am going to go ahead and finish the install, and I'm going to launch it. But I'm not going to run the Omni Rig setup. That's something that we'll do at a later date. Now this is going to come up and it's going to talk uh, about the program when it pops up. We're going to get a screen that covers how you can donate to uh, the cause and all that good stuff. Um, you know, if I use a piece of software, I tend to try to donate some, uh, some funds to it. Um, 
I, I'm really, really happy with this software. So, uh, you know, if you want to send some money in, be my guest. So, immediately when it pops up, it takes us right to the configuration screen. And I'm going to give us the quick start here, okay? I'm not going to go into a lot of detail other than I need to make sure that I put my call sign in here. Anything with an asterisk is required. Um, I can pick my station country. There we go. It automatically fills in my uh, IARU region, which is region two. Um, I actually, uh, I'm also in ITU six and my CQ, I believe is three. Let's see. And, uh, oh, of course, DM04 uh, and uh, M, uh, let's see, we'll go... Uh, um, for an E, I'll pop in my operator call sign, again AG6AG, my owner call sign, all right, and then uh, let's see, uh, I'm also going to put in my pertinent information about me. Now the reason that I do this is this will populate other places in the program when I'm trying to uh, you know, maybe auto uh, auto send uh, QSL cards or things like that. So, I mean, this is such a feature rich environment. It really is. So let me just pop this in again. Doesn't take long to do all this stuff, and um, it will make sure that this actually works for you when you're done. And that I think is the biggie here. Actually, I don't need any of that. All I need is that, that, California, and of course my county is Ventura. All right. And let's see. All right. That completes that. I can go ahead and uh, save it. And as a matter of fact, the only other thing I have to do to get going is I need to go down here under database. And I am going to create a new database. And this is where all of my QSOs are going to be stored. Now, if I forget to do this, it's not going to take any of my QSOs. So I want to do that. All right. And with that, we are going to create, I'm going to create a folder here under my documents directory. So we'll just right hand mouse click, go new and create a folder and we'll call it log for OM2. There we go. We'll go in there and I'm going to call this my daily log. There we go. And the database has been created. All right. So my database is all set up. Now I'm going to go to user configuration and right up here at the top, I've got a configuration right here and it has an automatic ID. I am going to change the description to daily. And then right here, I'm going to make this configuration active. And I'm going to save it and I'm going to save and apply. All right. So, let's see, and it's asking me about access to the network. I'm going to allow it access to both private and public networks. And there I am. Let's get this up to where we can see it. That might be a little big. I'll grab the corner here. All right, so this is basically the screen that you would start with offline because I'm not hooked to anything, right? But I'm on my profile daily, and... Down here, it tells me that I'm on my daily log. So I can begin to log contacts. If I click on F7, it's going to show recent contacts. Uh, let's put in W6KME. And I don't have any lookups set up, but eventually I will. 
Uh, I can certainly set my band and everything else. Uh, and if I want to save it, all I got to do is, oh, uh, data missing. What does it want? Oh, I think it wants the band here. 10 meters uh, and uh, upper side band. Let's see if it takes it now. There we go. All done. Just that easy. All right. So we've got an excellent start here. And really happy we had the opportunity to play with this. There's our entry right there. Now, if you have any other questions or whatever, make them in the comments. We'll continue this with setting up cat control and some other features to this program. But those are the basics, folks. You have a functional logging program now. Now you just got to make it perfect. Well, I know that was kind of minimal, but I promise we'll do more with this. We're going to look at OmniRig setup next, and then we'll go ahead and start interfacing it with other programs. So hang tight, and we hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, and if you did, please click on subscribe and We'll get emails out to you every time we have a new video out. 73 for now. This is Stu, AG6AG, hoping to hear you on the air.